Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Wheel of Time, Episode 4. This one is called The Dragon Reborn. It's still, I believe, um, directed by the same person. Well, the first two were different. I will say right off the bat that I am loving the show. I'll get into a little more detail. But when I'm coming off the first three that were released, I'm watching the fourth one. I'm really happy, pleased, I'm smiling, and that could be the fanboy, so I'll discuss some of that. I'll get that out of the way, because I am just thrilled to watch it. I am so excited and pissed that it's another week I gotta wait. So for me, it's one of those shows. Totally recommending it. Get that off. Right, get that out the front. Now, I'll say again, I've done a podcast for the first three. You get my concerns or my... I just i am really loving the show. And my love of the source material, the novels, could be a little bit biased. However, it could work against the show. Now, when I talked about my Game of Thrones podcast, when I did that, in a nutshell, it's basically me saying the show wasn't for me. I recognize the things that make it a great show. I just couldn't deal with the story, the way the plots were going around, and it just bored the shit out of me, and then they destroyed their legacy with the ending of that show, in my opinion. However, to recognize the great actors and the material they had, and just how they nailed some special effects when they got the money at the end, this show, The Wheel of Time, is doing everything right for someone like me. And I've said in my other podcasts, these books are thousands of pages long. Every one of them is huge. And I'm talking in comparison to other novels. I've read, well, my, let's say my favorites, right? Um, the Shannara series, Terry Brooks. Um, Good Kind with the Seeker, Legend of the Seeker, the Sword of Truth books. Obviously, Lord of the Rings. Um, you know, I've talked about my love of Forgotten Realms with Douglas Niles, R.A. Salvatore, and Dragonlance, Margaret Weiss. These are books that are 250 to 500 pages long. Almost every one of these books from the Wheel of Time are huge. But just like Lord of the Rings, if you do it right and you give dialogue to different characters you leave things out do it good and that's really all I'm concerned about they left out the Tom Bombadil stuff in Lord of the Rings now to me that's sacrilege you, that's such a beloved part of the book but they had to make a call and take it out of those movies and those movies are already when you look at the special cuts uh, you know three hours four hours long they have to make a decision here, and the decision here is, for the Wheel of Time, we want to captivate an audience, a certain audience. And for me, this is really good Dungeons and Dragons live-action show. It's got enough of everything in a blend, and the pacing, and everything just works for me. Now, this is only four episodes. I can't even tell you the concerns me and my friends had with Game of Thrones for the first season. Watching them try to do sword fights was just one of the most horrible things I've ever seen. And it took a while to get together, but you had the, you know, Boromir guy, beloved, and what they did at the end. So, to me, I'd rather watch a Legends of the Seeker type show, and I'd rather not see the Xena Hercules type of that. But I'm going to take value, and if I'm going to enjoy something, I'm just going to enjoy it. So, yes, I can go back and go... They left this out of the book. They gave this dialogue to this person. That person didn't say that. Why are they doing this with this person? Look, I wrote a book. I have a novel, The Mushroom King, book one of the Deadly Addictions Chronicles. And I have an outline for everything. Now, if a company comes to me, please, by the way, send me an email. I'll gladly uh, go into talks to option my book. But... Just like 
I told I said this before, like my heart broke when I watched the Shannara series. There's so much I wanted to love about that show, and it did have aspects that worked. I mean, there are talented people working on these shows. They're not trying to make shitty shows. But in the end, it went nowhere, spiraled into nothingness. Now, to me, it doesn't ruin the source material ever. You can save the Shannara franchise by someone picking up and doing it right. You can do movies. And it is my most favorite fantasy series of all time when you include everything he did with the world. These books are up there with my favorites. They're beloved. But if you're going to do it, do it good. And I will let it go. I'm just that type of a viewer, maybe. I don't need to have every insanely, even if it's really good po- politic dialogue and things that I didn't like that made me struggle through to even get through Game of Thrones and as talented as those people were and good some of the writing was I just didn't care I didn't care about it I care about this I'm watching this and I am happy I am in a good place all the time, even when I see things that my brain tells me, oh, this is, no, oh, we're skipping over, they're going too fast, or whatever. That's fine. Do it good, and I think they're doing it good. Alright, so, getting into the episode itself, we're picking up from the third one, and I kind of describe it as um, they come to the village, the first episode, trying to find who the Dragon Reborn could be, and when I say they, I mean Moraine and Lon. And then we get the first three uh, fleet, fleet of village and where they headed. Now we pick up with that. We get Moraine getting healed. Um, they show Logan being captured, and that's the focus of the show. But there's some subtle, amazing things they did in this episode that just gave me goosebumps. Like I feel like I'm in the books. It is, for me... What I wanted Game of Thrones to be. But this could all fall apart. This is only four episodes. And I know by eight, episode 8, The Eye of the World, if they are thinking of um, keeping it eight episodes a season, a lot's going to be cut out. Even if you do 14 seasons, right? Whatever, how many books there are, whatever. I know it's a prequel book and... I'm not caring about that. I have no worries about that. I am just enjoying myself watching this fucking show. My Dungeons and Dragons nerd is satisfied. My love of the books is satisfied. Some of the character pieces and highlights are satisfied. This is great scene with uh, Matt Rand and Tom Merlin. And they're going to go to the barn. And you can see Rand's influence. And he's trying to be honest and in a long story short it's one of those this family pays for helping us and the way they built it up was so good with matt and the little kid and then matt with the dagger and he's like i see it just fucking i loved it yes my brain can analyze things like oh this isn't the way it moved they're going this way they take, they're cutting out this huge section of the white cloaks. Or, well, this and that, and this and that. Look, this isn't going to have to be made all along the way. And I'm really liking this. When, I'm, when they cut to Eguine and Perrin with the, with the Tinkers, I'm in the books with the Tinkers. And yes, maybe somewhere in the back of my mind, like later on, I'll put together, oh, they, they missed an opportunity. Now, that could be part of this. That's fine. I can definitely look back at this and go, this was a missed opportunity. It was so great. I loved it. But they could have really fleshed it out more. Uh, I'm fine with admitting that, having an honest self-reflection on these things. But I'm just so captivated. So it's working for me. And you find out about the tinkers. They don't use violence. Um, This is just going into... Uh, parts of the book that will later be highlighted and they're, they're setting the right foundation and 
you know, I wouldn't be surprised if someone said, oh, you know, this didn't happen until so book something like, I get it, right? Or, look, we're going to get to the end, and it was, look at all that, which is also, I get it. But for what it is, if I showed this to a friend who's never read the books, I can almost be positive who's going to like it and who's not. This, people aren't going to care about fucking 1,600-page books. Like, this guy wrote so pompously that some of the names of the cities, the people, you got to go back three or four times to read it, to know who you're fucking listening to and who's speaking and what is going on. The, the back of his books are filled with pronunciations of these words and what they mean in the old history. And it's, he did it amazingly, but I don't look at it that way all the time. I know for a fact you look at these books and the Shannara series, the Lord of the Rings series, will be much easier reads to captivate an audience. Give people the Dragon Reborn books. Go ahead. Give people the Wheel of Time books. Watch what happens. You're not going to get the same reaction. You can tell Robert Jordan was a literary genius, the way linguistic, like the way he used language, uh, battles, and how deep and complex. He, he was the next level of, he took the to next level of Tolkien. So he is the, you know, um, the person who might have, you could say, took the torch and ran with it. But it's really complicated, really wordy and craziness. I could see the decisions made here to cut things out. And I love that they show in the fade. And I don't care if it looks similar to Lord of the Rings. And first off, that was a fucking mistake Shannara made. How do you convince Terry Brooks to start in book two? Because they were concerned that book one was too much like Lord of the Rings. Look, Lord of the Rings is the best fucking trilogy movie he's ever made, possibly, arguably. You can complain about the Hobbit movies, which I enjoy, but they're not as, um, you know, esteemed and uh, critically evaluated. They're not as good. But this is just something that fans are going to have to kind of deal with. It is following certain tropes and um you know the hero's journey type thing and it's a big part of dungeons and dragons and lord of the rings who set up this whole premise and this is the, yeah okay it's but it works and i don't care pay homage do it right make a good show and i'm thrilled this is following like i said the last episode so like i said we're catching up moraine's getting healed they're doing the uh interrogation or they were just low gains to focus on a male Cassie so powerful how hard it is to restrain him the way they used the magic to put the shields on I was so happy I was enjoying it because one of my concerns with the show is somewhat how they use magic well guess what this thing goes three seasons just like Game of Thrones this could be perfected and really done insanely well and I'm enjoying what they're doing I love the way the magic is working. And then there's this whole um, focus on it. And you see a little army battle. Like the people who are following this guy called Logan, Who declared himself the Dragon Reborn. I love how they got the voices. And he's talking to people. How he, he was a great actor. He's telling people or the, you know, the, the camera, you know. Not looking in the camera, but he's talking to the king um, of the place he's trying to take. And they do like a flashback of how he was caught type thing. And I'm captivated. The I'm loving the actors. The quiet, buried underneath talent of them, I think, is there. I could be proven wrong. We'll see. Uh, I really enjoyed how they... The naive village people from the first episode are showing growth in certain ways, and especially naive. So, this is just so much fun. You get to see the other Aesodai or Aesodai, different Ajas or the green Aja. And I think it's, I think I said to a friend something about stilled for Logan, but I think for men, they gentle him. 
in the sense where um, they're supposed to bring him back to the tower and they are arguing about they could gentle him right there, but the Amarlin, the leader of the Aes Sedai, Aes Sedai, wants him. So by breaking free and causing so much trouble, nearly killing everybody, they gentle him. And we'll see how that is done out in the end. Anyway, there's a line from uh, Moraine, and she's confronting Logan, and it gives opportunity for the other Aes Sedai to recuperate. And she tells him about, um, you know, and, it, and I love it. I love. She says things like, in the conversation, like, why do you think you're the dragon we born? And he says, like, they talk to me, all the past dragons. And then she's got this, because I love this actress in this role. Uh, you know, I don't even know for much stuff. I mean, Doom, the movie. But you can see she gets angry. And she goes, you know, you're not the dragon. You're a trickle. You're a spark. The dragon will be the sun. A blazing sun. You're nothing compared to him. And it fucking hits home. It just works for me. It just got me so happy. And then, at the end, you've got a blazing sun. And it's not from the character you think. And Logan comments on it. This is heading into places that I'm so happy, so eager to see. I'm not concerned about how fast they're going, what they're cutting out, whose dialogue's been given to another. So maybe it's the Shannara effect where I... Because like, I try to be honest, and I would say, the Shannara series is my favorite all time. You read the Sword of Shannara, you read the Seals, the Scions of Shannara, you read all these books that connect to it and then go back to a modern world, you see everything unfold, and it is spectacular, it is fucking... For me, almost perfection, everything. And they, they just fuck that show over. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's this show is so borderline good. It's very, I can see people just shitting on it fine. But I'm so such a fan, but I so want to love it that it's not what Shannara did. And it's hitting it for me. I'm loving the actors, the actresses, even the ones that I was concerned about. From the first three episodes. It feels like it's working for me. I could just imagine now if I analyze the first four episodes and go, wait a second, they're at the end of the book already. How the fuck did we get here? Like, I could see that, but I don't care. Like, in a way, I'm so happy with what I'm seeing. It's, it's satisfying me minute by minute till I get to the end and I want more. Just... Great. Um, it's, it's just amazing aspects of the character's uh, growth. Is there deceit, naive, and desperation? Because I don't know. If you looked at it from my point of view, maybe you could, or I, you know, maybe with a broader view in the part of the show where Logan breaks free. And he kills people. Well, they're going to die. I'll just say that. I don't like giving spoilers and major plot reveals. But let's just say, right? There's no one going to save them. Is this a dream? Like, it's that surreal. Like, this is it. Like, what the fuck is going on? And then, Nynaeve, in a desperation and anger and frustration and despair... Blazes like the fucking sun, and I got goosebumps. I got fucking drawn right into the books. I was, for, I almost forgot to breathe for a second. Like, I was captivated. And I think that's all that matters to me. No matter how much introspective and how much critical thinking and analyzing I put to show, you know what? I might even watch Mauler, like, do a review of this or other people, because that's what I'll do eventually. And I'll agree with their points. Like, hey, this was this, this was this. And just like the Green Lantern movie. I will maybe argue, disagree, but I'll acknowledge the parts that are flawed. But I still might say, subjectively, I still enjoy this. And then and, and that's what matters to me. Now, there are certain aspects of psychology and the human mind 
you know, you walk out of the prequel movies and you're hyped and you're so excited that Star Wars is back. You analyze them and you go, what a missed opportunity. I love The Phantom Menace to this day, but I would love that cut when Jar Jar's cut out of it or they turn it into... Um, uh, there were cuts where they turned all the alien language into um, text that you have to read in uh, closed caption, like, and they put alien voices. Like it, so I like that politics, and I love where they went with it. I will still go back and agree with people about how stupid they were, and they made so many mistakes in those movies. That's not to say that I don't find value in this and a critical way either i think they're doing an amazing job getting people into a series that the books are bloated with such literary elitism in in a, in a way that it's not even debatable in my opinion i can show you all these books from r.a salvatore margaret weiss tracy hickman douglas niles all the original D forgotten realms and uh dragon lance world dark sun Everything, every branch out from that explosion of books that I was a part of, and then you always went back to your um, Lord of the Rings, and for me it's the Shannara series, and you compare these, you can see how almost pompous Jordan was with his wording and his description, but it made it unique, it made me love the books in a different way. I don't know if someone made a choice here and said, we can't do that on this show. We can't. And I can get it. But I'll reiterate. Episode four. I am loving the show. I'm loving where it's going. Nitpicks aside, which would be, I'd rather have a little bit more impactful music. I see little things that I want to draw my attention to, but I'm, it's quickly taken away by just the quality of the show. But I don't have any major problems yet. I don't see issues. I'm not even worried that there's only four more episodes in the epi- in the series for the first season, and that's going to end book one. I think it's not bothering me. I can acknowledge it and understand it afterwards in the same way I would maybe cutting out Tom Bombadil from the Lord of the Rings movies, but again... Someone's making a decision. Someone's got to give the dialogue to someone else. It's going to happen, and I think the show is nailing it. So surprised how I'm really liking the Rand and like Perrin and Matt. When when the first episode starts, I'm torn, I'm a little worried about torn between new people. Can they pull off what is going in the books? Are they going to make a twist in the books? Are they going to, you know, what if they want to make the Drake me born, someone different from in the book. What if they want to go a whole new, different way? I mean, I don't think they're going to do that. I don't think they're going to play the game where they're going to shock you and, you know, it turns out they twisted things. Like Maybe they will. I don't know. But this is their vision, their, you know, collaboration to make The Wheel of Time a successful TV show, and I am loving it. So this was episode four of The Wheel of Time, The Dragon Reborn. It continues from the first three, and I am still happy. I learned about the way of the leaf. They vowed not to use violence with the Tinkers and Perrin. There's not so much action as the Ran Matt. Tom build up was fucking awesome. I just fucking love Tom Marilyn. I just can't believe how they nailed that character how much matt is matt rand is rand and you look at some of the trailers and stuff i didn't know if they could pull it off and they're pulling it off of me again and to be honest i know about psychology and to a certain extent i might look back on this and say what a missed opportunity however i am so immersed in robert jordan's fantasy series that I believe he would be so happy. Like, I actually do believe that. Like, maybe he has the intellectual honesty enough to go, yeah, man, these books cannot be done like that. 
I mean, what are you going to do? Do the first eight episodes and four of them have to do with dialogue in a um, column of regiment of white cloaks? Or, you know, who is this king of Gildan? And whatever how you pronounce these fucking places. And, like, Logan's story and how impactful. You got to make this a show. And I am loving it. Maybe at the end I'll do a you know a wrap up and kind of point out things that because what I don't like to do is <clears throat> go and watch other reviews. I like to get my own thoughts down, write it down, quick little outline. I'm not fucking you know going crazy and get my thoughts out, and then I go and look at other things. But even with this show, I'm not doing that episode by episode. Meaning, if I'm going to do a, a a podcast on Suicide Squad. Over the course of time, I might have seen blurbs here and there, watched the trailer, and seen some things, but I'm going to watch it, formulate my own thing, a little outline, do it, and then I go and I look at other stuff, and it, it, methods change. I recommend the show. It's so much Dungeons and Dragons, so much fantasy series done so well. I don't care if it looks like it, feels like this or that, and look. This is a great shot. I think they're knocking it out of the park. So there you go. Episode 4 of The Dragon Reborn. The Wheel of Time. I don't know. I just am so happy every week. And maybe it's that prisoner prisoner syndrome thing. Whatever. You know. You gave me Shannara and you shit on. You ruined Game of Thrones. Well, let's be honest. I was never into Game of Thrones. Uh, So I'm in a different... Uh, you can watch, listen to my podcast about that and my feelings on that. I won't get into it too much here, but let's keep this going. I am so excited for the next episode, and that's what matters for me as a someone who's wrote a book and published, self-published, whatever, and writes my Dungeons & Dragons adventures for over 30 years. I am uh, so happy. I'm a, I am in the books again. I am so thrilled for what's to come. So there you go. Watch the Wheel of Time. I hope everybody's doing well. Winter's here. Get it? Winter's here. Anyway, my best to you and yours. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.